Hello. This is another one of my videos based on Alistair Parker's short history of the Second World War. This one dealing with the War of the Atlantic, as I've termed it, from 1940 to 1941. It's based on the third chapter of Parker's book. The most successful attack on Britain during the war was the campaign to stop the country from being able to import the supplies of food and raw materials that needed to continue the war. As an island nation, Britain was heavily dependent on imports. This uh, attack was accomplished by the destruction of merchant ships in British waters, uh, or which ships which were bound for Britain, both by attacks by submarines, surface warships and aircraft, and by mines. And we're just going to deal with the initial stages of those attacks here. Parker gives much more detailed figures, but let me just summarize them here. In the first 22 months of the war, from September 39 through to June 1941, the Germans sank 2,521 British Allied and neutral ships trading with Britain. This amounted to 9,210,000 tons of shipping. And by 1941, the rate of loss was no longer sustainable. Uh, there was also a massive decline in the quantity of British imports and in the size of the British tanker fleet. In terms of means of attack, uh, the Germans employed various uh, systems, the most effective of which were submarines. These were deadly and uh, we'll talk about them perhaps more later. Uh, the other means of attack were long-range aircraft, um, in response to which the British began to arm their merchant ships with anti-aircraft weapons and even uh, catapulting hurricane aircraft into the air uh, for attacks on the German Fock Wolfs. Uh, the British also established new air bases in the Hebrides and Iceland. Uh, the second form of attack, apart from long-range aircraft, were sea mines uh, with magnetic and later acoustic uh, mines. Uh, with effective countermeasures, however, the threat became manageable as regular mine sweeping was able to create safe channels uh, for shipping. Uh, then we have surface raiders, which had been a major concern to the British Admiralty before the war. And these included both converted merchantmen, which could be easily disposed of when found, and German warships, which required uh, major British naval responses. Uh, these sunk, uh, sank uh, about 900,000 tons up to June 41. Um, and then we have the submarines. Uh, Hitler only gave sufficient priority to U-boat production in July 1940, and in 1941, however, the number of U-boats increased dramatically. German submarines were able to strike beyond the British escort range and were successful, uh, even against escorted convoys. The British were eventually able to develop effective shipborne anti-submarine radar and in April 41 had readied fueling bases in Iceland so as to be able to extend the range of their convoy protection to more than halfway across the Atlantic. Um, the Germans uh, for their part developed what were termed wolf pack tactics in which a number of German submarines would assemble to attack a convoy as a group. This is the most famous of the German surface raiders, uh, the battleship Bismarck, uh, which was uh, finally uh, destroyed um, as a result of British action in May 1941. Alongside the actual war, in terms of fighting at sea, uh, you have code breaking, which was crucial. In the war at sea, knowledge of where to find a target or an enemy or to evade them uh, can be decisive. Both convoys and submarines moved slowly, so if their intentions were known in advance, appropriate action could be taken. Orders which came by radio could be intercepted. The high-level radio signals by the Germans were coded by Enigma machines, uh, complex battery-powered electro 
magnetic um, apparatus. Striking a letter key on a typewriter closed an electric circuit which illuminated the letter on a display panel. But the path of the circuit varied depending on the choice of three out of five internally wired wheels, the positioning of the wheels to each other and the arrangement of the plugs connected to each of the 26, 26 letters. You get the idea. Incredibly complicated. The settings were changed every day or every other day and the wheels moved one place each time the appropriate key was struck. The system seemed secure and immune to uh, allied code breaking. Although some high-level German communications using Enigma were never deciphered, others were broken, often because the pattern of routine messages could be identified. Thus, Luftwaffe Enigma messages became decipherable in 1940 and remained so uh, for the rest of the war. And uh, German home water naval messages uh, began to be deciphered from early June 1941. And this latter had an immediate impact on the German submarine fleet because it was tightly controlled and therefore uh, the messages could be traced on that basis. Um, thus it became easier for British convoys to take evasive action to avoid German submarine wolf packs. And despite an increasing number of U-boats, shipping losses in July 1941 were cut by two thirds. For the moment, the British had the upper hand in the Battle of the Atlantic. This is a picture of uh, one of the uh, Enigma machines. Um, it doesn't give you a, a full picture of how complex it is, but you see the keyboard, the plug board, um, the, the letters which light up and the rotors which can be changed. Um, and then this is the British Code Breaking Center at Bletchley Park, which essentially remained a secret until the 1970s, uh, long after the war uh, was over. Bletchley Park uh, is significant uh, in the history of computing because uh, trying to crack these enormously complicated Enigma codes uh, required similarly complex mathematical formula and uh, machinery. So here's the Colossus Mark II code-breaking computer from 1943, uh, effectively uh, one of the major ancestors of all modern computers. Anyway, that's all I want to say for the moment. Um, particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement, without which these videos wouldn't be made. And thank you to you also for listening. Um, next week, we'll talk about the Middle East, Greece, and the dependence on the USA, Britain's dependence on the USA. In the meantime, please do like, comment, and share the videos. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And I'll give Patreon and PayPal links below if you want to provide practical support. Have a good day.